In this program, we're going to delve a little bit deeper into the rate constant. Let's begin by looking at where the rate constant fits into the rate expression. Um, the rate law expression says that the rate of a reaction is the rate constant times the concentration of one of our reactants to some experimentally determined uh, exponent and times perhaps a second reactant, again, to some other experimentally determined exponent. So we can see from the rate expression that these terms reflect changes in the concentration. But if we make changes to things like temperature or add a catalyst or affect surface area, then we're affecting the rate constant. So it's influenced by things like uh, the addition of catalyst, um, changes in our temperature, and perhaps changes in our surface area. And these all come from our factors that affect the rate of a reaction. Let's look a little bit more closely at the units of the constant. And to do that, I'm going to rearrange this expression. So if we want to isolate the rate constant by itself, we would have the rate of the reaction on top, and then on the bottom, the concentrations of A to some exponent and B to some exponent. Now let's strip away the numbers and look at the units. So now we're going to look at K's units. The rate of a reaction is typically measured in moles per decimeter cubed per second. Our concentrations are typically measured in moles per decimeter cubed. Now, those are then raised to some exponent. If I add those two exponents together, I get the reaction order, um, which I'll say is x. So just continue on with that for a moment. We get that k's units would equal moles to the decimeters per decimeter cubed to the 1 minus x times seconds to the minus 1. That's sort of a general expression for its units. Let's apply that now to the question that we have right here. The units of a reaction are found to be seconds to the minus 1. What's the order of the reaction? So we've been told what k's units are here. They're seconds to the minus 1. And they must equal moles to the decimeter cubed per decimeter cubed to the 1 minus x times seconds to the minus 1. That must mean that here, in front of this s, must be the value of 1. Now, that will only happen if this exponent totals to 0. So that's the key to solving this particular question. I know that 1 minus x must be 0, because any number raised to the 0 is 1. That then gives me that x is 1. So the overall um, order of this reaction is 1. Savante Arrhenius did work on both acids and bases and on reaction kinetics. And he found out there was a relationship between the rate constant and uh, an exponential relationship between the rate constant and the inverse of the temperature. And went later on to develop the equation that we see here, which is in our IB data booklet. So here we have the rate constant here. This A is sometimes referred to as the Arrhenius constant. The other part, the exponential portion of the expression,
Here we can see the effects of temperature and even perhaps a catalyst because we would change that. So that expression is in our IB data booklet, but also is this second expression. What this shows is if one was to conduct a series of experiments where you measured K and you make measurements of one over the temperature. So here you would put the ln of K and here you would put one over the temperature. You would generate a straight line. This particular equation is of the form Y equals M x plus b, the equation for a straight line. So y would equal this. m, the slope, would be this portion. And our intercept here would be the b. So if we graph this, we get sort of a, a nice straight line. This value here would correspond to the ln of the Arrhenius constant, and the slope of this line would be a measure of this quantity. So this would be the changes in the um, ln of the uh, rate constant, and this would be changes in 1 over the temperature. Let's employ this idea a little bit in the Next question. We have some experimental evidence here of uh, the rate constant at a particular temperature. So I'm going to let this be uh, my rate constant number one. And this is going to be temperature number one. Now I do need to make sure that I convert this into Kelvin to be able to do it. So this is going to be 293 Kelvin. Here, this value will correspond to my second situation, K2, uh, and this will be temperature number two. And again, make sure we convert that to the Kelvin scale, 333 Kelvin. And sorry, I'll put that up here too. So the slope of a line from math, we can recall is sort of the changes in our Y value over the changes in our x value. The changes in y are reflected by the ln of k, and the changes in x are reflected by 1 over our temperature. So if we start with our top, our changes in y, it would be the ln of k2 minus the ln of k1. And our changes in y would be 1 over t2 minus 1 over t1. And the slope of our line, as shown earlier, is this portion of the expression. So that's minus our activation energy over r. And again, we're after this activation energy, Ea. That top can be simplified a bit. Uh, one of the rules of logarithms, of subtracting logarithms, is they're the same as the following. This would be the same as the ln of k2 over k1. And that would be 1 over t2 minus 1 over t1. Let's carry that on over here. So I would have minus my activation energy over the gas constant is the ln, well, let's put in the values. Um, K2, we have 4.3 times 10 to the minus 3. And on the bottom, 2.1 times 10 to the minus 3. Whatever units these would have had would have, will cancel. And on the bottom then, 1 over T2, and temperature number 2, I'm using 333. Three, three and temperature number 1, 293. So putting that through my calculator, um, I'm going to get minus the activation energy over R, and 
working out this particular portion of the expression will come out to be um, negative 17 uh, 48 is what I got and the units here would just be Kelvins once I've done that and we'll carry on now to get what the activation energy is by itself by multiplying by R um, now remember that R has units of joules per mole per Kelvin so when I determine my activation energy I'm going to get this answer in joules and that comes out to around 14,500 joules per mole. Now, I'm going to finish this off by putting it in standard units for activation energy, which would be kilojoules. And I'm going to round it off to two significant digits, primarily because these two particular numbers do. So this would be around 15 kilojoules per mole. Reasonable answers for activation energy usually lie in the realm between 1 and 100. So there's my final answer. So you should be familiar with both forms of the Arrhenius equations and how to use them. Thanks for watching.